All right, guys, this is going to be a demo on a Canvas drawing app, and I'm going to make this available for both my drawing and my intro to art classes. So for this demo, I'm going to demo a drawing project, but just take what you learn from this, and this could be applied to any art project that you want to do from this point forward. So all my projects, they're going to have the option to, if you have materials at home, make them by hand at home, or you could digitally draw them. Um, or digitally create them. And so this is one of the programs you could use to do digital drawings. Um, so in either class, just go to the classwork tab. And then in both my classes should have a distance learning folder. And inside of that, I'm gonna put one called Canvas Drawing App, okay? So if you guys go to Canvas Drawing App here, um, there is a link to it right here. And it's a really simple, basic program. Uh, it's going to load up. It's going to look something. These are just some drawings I was kind of working on, but I'm just going to say new drawing in the upper left. And you're literally just going to get a canvas like this. OK, um, basically, the way this program works is you've got some simple pen, charcoal, uh, pencil tools like that. Um, you can also work in layers, but it's very simple. But my thought is, is that because I know you all have touch screen on your Chromebooks, um, you could do this touch screen with your finger, or if you have some type of um, pen, like a digital pen or pencil that you could use. I know I saw students using regular pencils on them. I don't know if that if that's recommended, but if you have like a tool like that, you could use. Otherwise, you could use your finger, and I've done drawings with just my finger, and it worked out just fine. Um, I do happen to have um, an online pen that I can use, so that's what I'm going to use in this demo. Okay, so the first tool up here, this just allows you to change colors. There's pretty limited amount of colors, but you can go to custom and pretty much grab whatever color you want. So there's a lot of color choice here. Um, down below here, you can see you have a basic pencil, a pen, a marker, um, charcoal, and then an eraser. So it's, it's kind of limited on the tools, but there's enough that you can do what you want. This little button right here, um, this allows you to change the size and opacity of any tool you're using. So the size is gonna be how wide your brush strokes are, how you know thick your lines are. The opacity is how transparent it is. So if it's at 100, that means it's like a really solid line. If it's less opaque or the opacity is lower, it means it's going to be more transparent. So I'll just show you really quick. So I'll go at 100% with the pencil really quick. And these are what like the pencil lines look like. Okay, and you can press Control Z to undo. Otherwise there's some arrows here at the top if you wanna undo something. Now you can see I can lower the opacity. This one's only at 16%. And you can see the lights, the lines are very, very light. And they're also going to be transparent as you overlay them. This is going to be useful for doing value and shading where you can just kind of make layers of low opacity values to kind of build up and make stronger values. OK, um, I'll just show you all these tools really quick. Here's the pen tool. You can see just very solid pen lines there. Um, marker, same thing. This is a lot thicker or thinner, depending on what you want to do. But naturally, that's a lot thicker because I have the opacity set the same. Um, here's charcoal. So you can see it's got that really cool charcoal texture to it. Um, and then this is just a basic eraser. Um, in each tool, once again, acts differently with size and all that, but you can also change the color. So I could do like color pencil. So you can see, well, can't really see that. Let me make the opacity bigger. So you can see that's like a light blue color pencil and so on and so forth. Okay. So that's basically the tools there. The other thing that's cool is up here in the upper right where my red circle is, um, there are layers and you can also change the background color. So this is really nice because you can work in layers and um, draw different parts on different sections and then you can erase one part without interfering with the other part. Okay, so I'm just gonna get into a little drawing here and just take what you learn from this and basically apply it to whatever you want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work from a still life. Um, and so in my office, I just set up a still life of a hat and a um, pop container from my lunch. OK, so I'm basically going to do a, a soda cup and my hat um, that are sitting on my desk. Okay, And I'm going to just draw those. Um, so for those of you in my drawing class, if you're still doing the still life project, I'm going to set this up like as an example of how you might do your final project Okay, for that digitally, of course. Um, so I'm going to start with a pencil tool. Um, I'll just use black. And um, I'll just start with, yeah, pretty high opacity is probably, I might go a little bit, like maybe 75 or something, um, just because I want the lines to be light. And what I'm going to do is these pencil, this pencil sketch is just going to be on its own layer. 
I'm not going to worry about if the lines are perfect or not, okay? The idea is, is this is going to be like my rough sketch layer, and then I'm going to build the final drawing on top of that in several different layers. So I'm going to start with my cup, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my photo of my still life. Um, I'm going to imagine the canvas sizes, and my photo is like this canvas I'm working on digitally, and I'm going to try to make the objects fit. So looking at mine, I can see that um, the container kind of starts up here. So I'm just going to do these little light pencil sketch lines and you can be sketchy just like you would be with a real pencil um, and then down here it's kind of got like this oval for the bottom of my glass okay so i'm going to imagine that there and then i'm going to draw up this way like this and then i'm going to start to kind of sketch this in okay and this is basically going to be my my little soda that i just had okay so and I'm just very lightly sketching with my pencil, but this works with your fingertip too. So you can take your fingertip. It's a little bit harder with your fingertip, um, but it works okay. And then my um, drink cup has like a picture of a Coke bottle on it. So I'm gonna just try to sketch that in here really quick. Okay. But yeah, if you do have some type of like pen or something you can use like a digital stylus, that's the word I was looking for. If you have a stylus, um, that works really well. I know any of you, if you play video games and you have like a Nintendo 3DS, I think those styluses work. And like I said, I know some people um, were using um, actual real pencils on that worked. But um, so there, there's my drink cup. Okay. Now next to it, I have my hat. So I'm going to start sketching my hat. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at where they overlap in my photo. I know you guys can't see my reference image right now, but I'm just kind of working from that. What I'll probably do is I will post the reference image I'm using, like in the in with this, so that you guys can see what my reference image looks like. Okay, so that way you can tell I'm not just like making this up. I'm actually looking at something. Okay, so here's the bill of my hat. I'm really paying attention to way, the way the lines move what direction it's going, things like that. Now, for both of my classes, you guys have perspective assignments you're working on. I don't want you to use this for perspective because I want you to have straight lines and this doesn't have a straight line tool um, that I'm aware of. So I have a different drawing program you guys are gonna use for that. And it's just super simple, super basic. But this can be used for any other drawing assignment that I give you guys or anything that you need to draw with. Okay, so I'm just gonna kinda Get this sketched out here. Okay, something like that. And then I've got this little guy up here. Okay, and then I've got this little piece here. Okay, something like that. And then, um, of course, we got to have the logo up here, right? So, looking carefully at my image. And, you know, you should be, if you're using a reference, you should be looking at the reference um, more than your paper or more than your screen here. So I'm really looking back and forth quite a bit. And I'm just trying to get my TC logo on here for my twins cap. Which is kind of a bummer that they're not even playing baseball right now, right? All right, just quickly getting this sketched in here. And what I'm going to do in a minute here is when I have, my, once I have my initial little sketch on here, and, you know, this doesn't need to be perfect. It's just kind of like an under sketch, right? Um, and then I have things in the background as well, you know, so I could say that maybe I can kind of see my table back here. I could kind of draw the back edge of where my table might be, because then I could have like a cast shadow on here and do some of that stuff. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in the upper right here, go to my layer. So this drawing is on a layer, so I can click this eyeball and I can make it disappear. But if I click this plus button, I can quickly add a new layer. And now this new layer, I can just draw right on top without interfering with my original sketch that's kind of underneath, right? Now, those of you in my drawing class, we were talking about for the three objects still life. Some of you finished it. I think I want to say like four or five of you finished it, but we had like that really big brown paper. And then we did white and black charcoal to show the highlights and shadows, right? Well, we can do the same thing on here. So I can take in my layers window down here, there's this paint bucket that I can change the background. So if I go to custom here, I can go down here and scroll and find a color range that has some tans or some browns on it. So I could go like this and give myself like that brown medium background on there. 
and that'll just sit underneath and this can be changed at any time but now for this drawing we can do like white and black charcoal and put the values in and do all that fun stuff <clears throat> so i'm going to minimize that window and now i'm going to go over to my charcoal i'm going to start with black charcoal and i'm going to start doing some shadows now i recommend don't go like full 100% opacity. So what's gonna happen is, is your lines are gonna be really dark. So you can see if I try to shade this, it's gonna be super dark and it's not like going to blend very well. So for this drawing program, I would go really low opacity. I wanna say 25 to 30%, I'll go 25%, okay? So it's just gonna be like a super light line, okay? And then once again, my object's a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna like shrink the size of my thing down so I'm drawing in smaller lines okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on my hat and I'm going to start by just slowly building some values in so I can see that there's some darker values down here and what I'm doing is I'm just rubbing multiple lines over each other to make it darker and then this here makes it a little bit easier to kind of slowly blend it so you can see I can just kind of push out some of these lines here and then now down here, where it's darker, I can just keep overlapping and just making that a little bit darker and blending that out a little bit more carefully. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is I might go a little bit bigger on my size, just to give myself a little bit wider lines. So I do kind of want this whole area here to kind of be a lighter shadow, and then it's gonna slowly blend into like that light brown area and then i can just once again lay over some more lines here and build up some of those values where i feel like it's a little bit darker and you can be a little bit inventive like when you look at my reference photo you really can't see this much shadow but i'm trying to imagine and maybe emphasize some a little bit so now up here uh let's see i'm gonna have all this up here kind of be a little bit i kind of see some wrinkles here that are creating some interesting things going on so i'm going to go like this and i'm going to have that come down here and kind of what i'm seeing down here is this here is all fairly light um, and then it blends out lighter and then it kind of gets darker near the bottom so i'm just going to layer over some darker charcoal here um, and i'm going to go up here i feel like this is a little bit darker on my reference image as well so i'm just layering over a little bit there Okay, and then the top of the hat gets pretty light, so I'm just gonna have this kind of go into my medium kind of tone that I have on my paper there, okay? Um, or my background. And I'm just gonna kind of blend that out a little bit with just some light. But I'm doing all this, so I just did all that shading there at 30% opacity. And if you really want it darker, you can up the opacity, but you can achieve the same thing just by overlapping. So if I just wanna keep overlapping those 30%, it will get um, darker and darker. So we can check here. So what I can do is I can make that layer invisible and you can see that my shadows are just on one layer. So what's really nice is if you do some really good shading, you can actually get rid of those outlines if you don't want them and just have your value define the image. Or you can leave the pencil lines if you kind of like the way that they look. You can see I'm just kind of working my shading that way. So I'm gonna go up here. I might go back to my pencil because I want a really skinny line. And I want really high opacity because I have, I'm just noticing under like this little knob up here, there's like some really, really dark, just a really dark, fine shadow defining the bottom of that. So I'm going to do that. And then I do notice that there's kind of like a really thin shadow in here. So I'm going to go in with my pencil and kind of create a nice little dark shadow there with my pencil. Um, and then there is like a texture on the back. And I kind of notice it. it kind of goes like this. So I'm going to kind of just use my pencil dark and I'm just going to overlay this kind of texture over the back of it and then I'm going to cross my lines this way I think a little bit just do a little bit of cross hatching back here okay and then now I've got that so now I've just kind of layered that right on top um and then so like the T on here is really light so let me go back to like my charcoal I could switch my charcoal to white now. And so anywhere that I see like a highlight, let me see here. You can see that I can actually draw in white on there. Okay, so what I can do is once again, I can check my opacity. Might up the opacity a little bit on the white. But like this T is really bright. So I might go in here and like really lighten this up. 
and add some white on this. And start getting that value on there. And then I might go and like, there's some very subtle shadows and things like that that I could add. I might actually go a little bit thinner and then up the opacity so I can get this really bright. So once again, you can do this with your fingertip or if you have some type of thin tool, okay? And then, you know, I could go in, I'm not gonna sit here and do like the whole thing super detailed, but you're getting the idea of how this is working. Um, I might just go to the drink cup really quick and get a little bit on there and then I can kind of be done with this video. Um, so I'll go back to black charcoal. I do really like the 30% on black for opacity. You, I, I recommend you guys just experiment and kind of try out, you know, figure out what you like. But definitely on the drink cup, I'm seeing that. Um, and then let me see here. What's my size? Let's go a little bit bigger on the size here. Um, I'm definitely seeing like the shadow over here. Uh, let's see. Um, I must have clicked something because it's like stopped drawing. So let me see here. Let me just up the opacity really quick and make sure that this is actually drawing. It's not drawing. Let me just refresh really quick. The nice thing too with this canvas, I'll just kind of explain right now. It like saves all of your drawings like as a little side account. So I can just go back into this. So even though I had like that little error there, let's see. Yep, it's drawing now. So I can come back in. I can go back to 30% opacity. Yeah, sometimes it just glitches like that and it like stops drawing. Okay, yes, it's working now. All right, so I'm going to go back in here. And I'm just going to start layering some value here okay and then i'm gonna just layer over with some more lines and get darker and darker near this edge here and i'm just kind of creating that nice gradual gradual blend there of value okay so that's kind of how that looks there once again i can go back here go and you guys can see or if i go here you can kind of see my value and how i'm creating that okay um so i'll just give you that as the example okay now the next step would be is let's say you finish your drawing and you're like ready to turn it in so the drawings have to be turned in digitally so if you're actually drawing it digital you're just going to turn in the file um i do recommend though you guys do something unique to it if it's a digital drawing like this to identify it as yours i need to know that you're not just pulling stuff online because that's very easy for people to kind of cheat that way um not that I don't trust you guys. I just want to be consistent for everyone. So let's say I take this um, black here, pencil, and maybe I can actually put my signature down here. Okay, and then I could put the date. So today is like 32320. Okay, that's when I'm recording this video. So if you can like sign and date your art, whether it's digital or if this were like a hand drawn one. Um, I would want you to do the same thing. I would want you to sign your name and date on there. Or if you don't want to actually like write your name and date on the actual project, you could write it on a separate piece of paper. And then when you take a picture of your physical artwork, you could include that in there. Or you could take a selfie with your artwork at all. But if you submit artwork to me and there's no identification like name and date or your face isn't in it, I'm going to have you resubmit it. That way I'm just fair for everyone. And I know everyone, everyone's work is legit and all that. Okay, so that's basically that. So like, let's say I'm ready to turn this in. You click the three dots in the upper right. You click save as image. It's done and it's just gonna be called canvas. Um, and it'll be a PNG file. It might be canvas one, canvas two, depending. So if you wanna go in and rename that, you can. So if you just go like down into the search bar here, if you don't know how to find your downloads folder, it's just gonna be in your downloads folder. So if I type in downloads, Okay, my downloads folder should appear. It's the one with the blue arrow. Okay, so I could go into here, and these are some other canvas drawings I was kind of working on. So I could rename this, and you could just put like your first and last name and maybe the name of the project. So I'll do Mr. Wagner, and then I'll call it Still Life, something like that. Okay, so I've got my Still Life in there. It's got my name on it. Okay, so then what? Do is you go to Google Classroom and you go to whatever assignment you're turning in. Now, um, I'm creating new assignments under distance learning, but it might be that you're turning in something that was before this all happened. So, like for my drawing class, we were working on the still life before we decided we're doing this distance learning stuff. So, you might have to go back down to the actual projects and assignments. So, for 
them, it would be this uh, part part two of this project for my drawing class. So you would go into here, you would click um, view assignment, and then you won't see it on my computer because I'm logged in as a teacher, but in the upper right up here, it'll say add or create, and then you turn it in that way. And actually really quick, what I might do is I might log in. I'm gonna log in as a student, and I'll show you how to do that. Let me just see if this will work here. Um, that way you can actually see it a little bit more clearly. I know some of you probably know how to do this already. Um, you know what? I don't remember the... Well, here, let me put this in and see if it remembers. Okay. And I'm pretty sure I'm on the Google Classroom, so let's just check this out here really quick. Sorry for the delay. This will be really quick, though, once it loads up. Okay. So, um, all right, I'm not in on a drawing class, but I'll just go into game design. That's fine. Um, so just pretend this is your art class, right? So you just go into the assignment, and I'll just find an assignment that I can turn in. So I'll go into here. Okay, so what you would do is you would click View Assignment. And then what you would do is you would click Add or Create right here. So you click Add or Create. And then you're just going to click File. And then when you click File, you're going to do Select from your device. And then you're going to go to Downloads. And then you're going to find the picture and submit it. So there you go. You click Upload. That's going to load right in. Just like this. And then what you'll do down here is you have to click Submit and you have to click turn in. And then once you do that, you're good to go. Now, your assignment, depending on which assignment it is, it's also gonna have a Google form, okay, like right here that you would wanna fill out. I recommend you submit the image first and submit the project and then do the Google form. If you do the Google form first, it considers the project submitted and it won't let you add or create. So if you do that by mistake, you'll just have to click unsubmit and the Google form won't go away. Like if you've turned it in, it'll stay turned in and then it will allow you to add or create more. Also, this is good if you have multiple pictures you want to put in. You notice how I just inserted this one. All I had to do is unsubmit and then I could add another one. So now I could say add or create um, file. Because some of you might have more than one picture depending on the assignment because some assignments have multiple drawings in it. So you could do that. I could put in another drawing. So here's another canvas drawing I made. So I'll just click upload and that'll go in, okay? So as long as you don't click submit, you can add, keep adding in multiple files at a time. So the issue is, is when you do the form, it considers it submitted, so then you just have to click on submit. But this is basically how you would turn it in, okay? Um, so hope that makes sense. So once again, this can apply to any physical drawing I'm asking you to do. You could do it using this Canvas program or any other program that you have available to you.